We'll show you now how easy it is to create some useful shapes within Visio from data from the web. In this case, I'm looking at the CIA uh, wonderful website, the World Factbook, and there you can see that's a whole load of flags. Okay, and each of those flags are coded within their website as images that are being pulled out according to a particular code. They have also got this um, table here of all of the entities in the world and they've got various coding systems and just the first one here, the GEC code, is the one that we're going to use because that is used in retrieving the flags for a particular one, let's say for example Cameroon if you look at that, it's CM and on their website they have got this area where you can get to the GIF going like that so what I'm going to do now is just go simply into Excel and in Excel we're going to go to data get data oh actually we can just go straight to the from the web button here and the get and transform and then when this dialog appears we just type that or paste it into the URL then we do OK and it starts to bring back the data so here we can see there's a table in there, the cross-reference, and there's that table that we saw within the web page. So I'll just load that within here. And then we get this nice looking table here. And so I'll just give this a name, let's say countries, for example, and I'll save that workbook so that we can use it later. I'm just going to save it as well, I think I've uh, already saved it once before, but I shall do it again just to go through the process. And here we are, CIA country codes, uh, and save that. Okay, so now that I've got that, I can open up Visio. So, we open up Visio and we can import our Excel table. So let's just go and select that and bring that in. And it's called Countries tab. And in there we can see we've got all of these columns. And I'll just bring them in using Entity as the primary column. So now that I've got all of these, I'm going to drag one of these out records out onto the page but before I do that I'm going to open up the document stencil so you see what happens so here on the moment in document stencil there is nothing if I go and drag one of these rows out onto the page and let go you'll see that it's become a shape which has got some default shape data graphics on them and a master called rectangle has been created so this is an instance of that rectangle master. So if now look at this and click off that shape and select data graphic fields. We can see that these are the shape data rows that are being displayed. But I don't want to know the ISO one. I'm going to have the entity, but I'm going to modify that particular value, show that it shows it's nicely along the top of the shape, which is going to be roughly a flag proportion. So I'm going to configure in there and select there's going to be a heading shape and I don't want the default position. I'm going to go to center and to the top. And when I do OK, we see now we've got a nice little header on there. So this is going to be my group shape. and It is a group shape now because it contains the subshapes, which is the header in there. And in, within that, I'm going to have an image. So the easiest thing to do is to edit that shape. And I'm using this command here called edit object, which if you haven't got it, you can use customize the ribbon to bring it on because it's not currently a popular command, but it is a command that's not in the ribbon. And I've added it onto my developer tab under a new group called my extras. So this is one that I've brought in because I like to use that. And when I do select a group shape and select edit object it opens that group shape up into group edit mode and whilst i'm in there i'm going to insert just a dummy image so i'll select a picture 
one which is roughly a flag proportion or it's a little bit large so let's just make that a bit smaller and put it within our container like so when i say container it's not an official container it is a group shape and this is a shape that's within that one now when i close that i have got an image within here so that's a, just a simple way of adding in an image into that but i want that to be smarter because i want that image to change when the the gec dot uh, value changes on the top level group shape so how am i going to do that well first of all i'm going to use my macros and my macros will be available when i go open up my image utils which is downloadable from my blog and in that image utils and i go into macros there's a series of macros available the first one is called anchor image in group so if i run that it's now pretend that's your numeric keypad if you've got one my particular laptop doesn't have a keypad but i remember how they're supposed to be and we can see that if it's going to be number five then it's going to be docked in the center of there so i'm going to leave it as the default five now that shape that image shape is going to be you know un anchored within the center which is not a lot different than it was but i have now added into that some shape data rows itself and you can see that there's an image path and an image name in there which don't contain values currently there's also some other properties there for the resize option so do not resize or resize with group and we've got lock so maybe this ought to be two so that when the group changes in size the image changes in size and the final option down there is to lock so at the moment it's locking the aspect ratio uh, you could lock it so that it's doing its width or height or, or none i'm going to leave it as the aspect ratio because it is roughly the aspect ratio of a flag now i want to be able to set those properties that we have there the image path and image name to reference the af group value sorry af gec value that's there so how am i going to do that well i've got another macro in there if we go to the there there is here to so set image formulas and if i run that it is now looked at the shape data that's on the top level of the group and it's listed all of those and you'll notice that for automatically created ones using the link uh, data to shapes command or function it actually gives an underscore visdm underscore in front of the name that you might recognize. It also doesn't allow any spaces and it takes out any uh, special characters. So uh, those are the actual underlying names of each of those shape data rows that you see on that top level. Sheet dot one zero zero six is that unique identity of that rectangle the main rectangle, the group shape. Now I've put in here as an example of something you might want to use, which is to equal the hyperlink base. So in this case, I am going to use that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to copy that formula that I've got at the top there, hyperlink base. And that is going to be the formula for giving me the image path. And that hyperlink base is going to go off to that uh, place that we saw where all the uh, CIA GIF files are. So I'm going to do that as that. Then the next one that needs to be set is the image name. Now I don't want to do hyperlink base in this case. It's going to be derived from that top level value there. So here I'm going to type in guard and I've got a shortcut here so I can just do dollar G for the group level shape and that get replaced with that sheet dot one zero zero six or whatever it may be and then i'm going to have the prop dot underscore viz dm underscore 
deck. Now that will give me that value that's in the in the top level, but I also need to un add into that the flag dot gif to finish it off. So oh, I should spell flag correctly. So there we've got uh, the flag dot gif. Now when I add that formula, we see that it's now gone off and it's done an image replacement. So now I have got uh, an amended master here, uh, which I'll call a flag of the world. So I'm going to put that onto my stencil. But before I do that, one thing I'm, I'm going to do is protect it a little bit. At the moment, you see, I can select the subshapes. In general, generally, I don't want to be able to do that. So on the developer tab, I'm going to go to behavior and I'm saying group only. And I don't want anybody to be editing the text of this particular group because we're going to get that from the shape data. They don't need to edit that. So I'll just do OK on that in a moment. But placement, I want any uh, connector lines to go around it. So I'm going to do OK on that. So I've now got my flag shape. And the easiest thing to do is just to drag that onto the document stencil. And we'll call that uh, flag of the world. Yeah, and maybe I ought to have spaces in there so that it looks a bit prettier. Right, so how do I use that? Well, now that I've got that master, I can select a row with that master selected. I can select a row from here, drag and drop, and it'll apply uh, the codes and it'll go and fetch the flag from the web. So now I've got that. I could easily bring in another one and drag and drop it. Or Andorra, who knows what that one looks like. So we've now got uh, a quick way of replacing the images within the shape. I can, if I wanted to, I could take a whole series of them and just do drag and drop. And you'll first of all, you'll apply the code and then it's going to apply the path and find the image and bring it in from the web and add it in to the shape. So how does that work? Well, let's have a look behind the scenes, if we may. First of all, I'm going to just select one of these while Austria will do. And I'm going to do what I undo one of the things I did earlier. I'm just going to go and allow myself to be able to go and select the sub member, which is the flag shape there, because that's where the, the goodies are, so to speak. So if we're looking to look at the shape sheet within there, and expand that, we can see that there's a um, certain amount of information going on here. But the there's all that shape data that we saw there. Now you can select it. And what happens is that this formula here in the image trigger, user defined one, is listening for changes within any of these values there. And when it detects there is a change, it calls a function here. So this is going off into the VBA code and it's going into the image utils project, into the, the mod images module and going to the image trigger function. So if we're going to have a look at that within VBA and we'll go to the mod images and we'll go and have a look at image trigger. So when it goes into image trigger, First of all, it just makes sure that it's within the group. Uh, and that's just a quick way of me handling that. And then it goes into this function here called load image. And in load image, it passes in that subshape and it reads the properties that we've got in there. And if there is a an image, file path and file name, it goes and tests for it within there. I've also got a little bit of extra in here that if you don't give it an extension of, uh, you know, JPEG, GIF or BMP, whatever, right, it is actually going to cycle through all of those that are in this constant up here, image extensions, that is also used for a manual selection dialog. 
and it's going to look for those and run through it and test whether any of those are there. So having done that, and if there is a need to replace the image, it will do that. And the change image function will return the aspect ratio, um, which will be less than zero if it didn't actually work. And they'll just go to exit out of that. And then it'll go and check for other options you may have in there, the anchor options, resize option, and, and the lock option, and it applies those. So it just simply goes through and applies those to that subshape. And that's uh, how it works.